On July 21, 1918, German soldiers captured a U.S. soldier from the 307th Infantry Regiment, 77th Division, near Baccarat, France. He was carrying a weapon they had never seen, a Winchester Model 97 pump-action shotgun. On September 15, 1918, the German government officially protested the use of the shotgun in a note verbale an unsigned diplomatic note. On September 19, Friedrich Oberlin, the Swiss Chargé d'Affaires in Washington, presented Secretary of State Robert Lansing with a cablegram from the German government, protesting the use of shotguns by American forces on the Western Front, which read, The German government protests against the use of shotguns by the American army and calls attention to the fact that according to the law of war, Every prisoner of war found to have in his possession such guns or ammunition belonging thereto forfeits his life. The State Department immediately forwarded the cablegram to Secretary of War Newton D. Baker, asking for guidance. The result, a week later, was a five-page memorandum from Brigadier General Samuel T. Ansel, the Army's acting judge advocate. Ansel began by stating the obvious namely, that the purpose of the shotgun was to kill and to wound. Ansel then noted that he assumed the object of the protest was a pump shotgun described this way several months earlier in Scientific American magazine. When fired, the new American gun sprays the contents of each shell over an area measuring nine feet horizontally and about three feet vertically so that it is almost impossible not to hit a large number of enemy infantrymen coming to the attack in a typical mass formation of the Germans. As for the penetrating power of the buckshot, it is reported that during a recent test the hail of lead went through a two-inch plank with plenty of energy left for further damage, at 150 yards from the muzzle. Ansel also cited an article in a New York newspaper which said the shotguns, equipped with bayonets, could stop the rush of German shock troops at close quarters. The article went on to observe that with a rifle, a miss is as good as a mile, but with such a shotgun, the user of it might aim three feet or more off his target and get his man. Ansel pointed out that such a shotgun could be used to kill the enemy's carrier pigeons and detonate enemy grenades before they could reach their target but that the chief purpose of employing it in combat is, of course, the highly necessary one of killing or putting out of action at close range as many as possible of the enemy in as short a time as possible. Ansel finally turned to Article 23E of the Hague Conventions, which prohibited the use of weapons or ammunition designed to cause unnecessary suffering. The article was not aimed at efficiency of killing, Ansel argued, but against cruelty and terrorism. Invoking the German word Schrecklichkeit, which means frightfulness or horror, Ansel pointed to sawtooth bayonets, flamethrowers, and chlorine gas as examples of German weapons that caused unnecessary suffering, pointing to the hypocrisy of the German army accusing Americans of wrongful military tactics. On April 20, 1918, American soldiers used them at Chichepre, France, in the first significant U.S. infantry battle of World War I. The weapon was designed to give American troops an important edge in close combat, and it did just that. With a 20-inch barrel, sling swivels, and a bayonet lug, the 12-gauge shotgun also had a perforated metal heat shield that allowed soldiers to use the bayonet even when the barrel was too hot to hold. The shotgun accommodated six shells, one chambered in the spout, and five in its magazine, each containing nine double-O buckshot pellets. A trained soldier using the Model 97 trench gun in slam-fire mode, holding down the trigger while pumping, could unleash six blasts in a matter of seconds. The destructive spread of 54 8.4mm buckshot pellets spraying laterally, with an effective range of up to 50 yards, is exactly why the guns became known as trench brooms or trench sweepers. In June, at the Battle of Belleau Wood, 
The trench shotgun allowed American soldiers to literally mow down the advancing enemy troops. That shotgun volley was new to them. J.H. Hoskins, a captain in an American engineering company, told the Nashville Banner, his hometown newspaper. Every time a gun fired, three or four Germans would go down. The more the surprise gripped them, the closer they would huddle, and the deadlier was the fire. The German protest elicited mostly derision from American newspapers. This response from the New York Sun was typical. It is hardly necessary to point out how ridiculous is this protest from a government that has used in war every foul means known to a foul mind. The inventors of poison gas objected to the use of a clean bullet. The protest is without legal merit, Ansel concluded. It would be ill-founded coming from an enemy whose conduct had evidenced the highest regard for the laws of war. Coming from our present enemy, it is destitute of all good faith. With Ansel's memo in hand, Benedict Crowell, the assistant secretary of war and the future president of the National Rifle Association, offered his own opinion about how the United States should reply. I am at a loss to see any plausible basis for the protest, he wrote, noting that the shotgun was an ancient and approved weapon that had fallen into disuse not because it was thought to violate the laws of war, but because of the changing nature of warfare had limited its tactical effectiveness. The killing of combatants is not only lawful, but one of the chief means of warfare, he wrote, and no weapon can be objectionable merely because of its capacity to kill. In a formal response to Germany's protest, Secretary of State Lansing maintained that the shotgun the army used could not be subject of legitimate or reasonable protest under the Hague Conventions. As for Germany's threat to execute American soldiers captured with shotguns or shotgun ammunition, Lansing promised that the United States would make such reprisals as will best protect the American forces. The German government did not reply to Lansing's letter, and no Americans are known to have been executed for carrying shotguns or for having shotgun ammunition. Fighting ended with Germany's surrender on November 11, 1918 four months to the day after it was discovered that Americans had brought shotguns into combat. Germany's real reason for objecting to the shotgun was undoubtedly its brutal effectiveness. As Peter F. Carney, the editor of the National Sports Syndicate, noted in 1918, the gun carried more terrors into the hearts of the enemy than any other instrument of destruction that has been used. Carney went on to say that Ager, who by then was an officer in the U.S. Navy, was in large measure responsible for the defeat of Germany's armies.